evening and welcome, of course, to the Potterverse podcast pre-show. You're here before we're recording the podcast, and this is the time where we get to meet one another, let each other know what houses you're from, where we're tuning in from, and most importantly, hitting that share button below. You can share onto your stories, your wall, and your messenger, and your favorite Harry Potter groups. Wherever you share, it is greatly appreciated as it helps get the Potterverse out to other Potter fans. YouTube friends, you could share however you like. What we do ask is that you then come back here to the Mary and Blake page page and write expecto patronum and that is your little way to us to let us know that you shared we'll give you a special little shout out we also like to give a shout out to those of you who are part of our patreon community sorry i wasn't paying attention no you were not our <laughs> patreon community oh <laughs> give us the hashtag go nerd clan go Everybody at the the nerd clan the warm and wonderful extraordinary people you amazing folk at jointhenerdclan.com. Give us a hashtag, go nerd clan, go. That way we know you are part of it. <laughs> you know, Mary, I'm just going to hit it right now. How to tell Love when it. the hosts are listening. I usually get listening. that when he gets that button. It makes me feel all sorts oh, of good. Oh, I know. Blake, would you mind giving some little hellos to our friends who are joining this now? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you. I was not listening at all. <laughs> Caitlin, thank you, who never misses a beat, as well as Allison and Jennifer, thank you so much, and Rachel and Gloria and Tina, thank you so much, and uh, who else we got here? We got Patricia's here, and Ellen, of course, our girl down in Australia, and Tina's given us the hashtag GoNerdClanGo, as well as Caitlin. Thank you. Rachel says, this chapter should have been in the movie, Marvin. Oh my gosh, Honestly. And, whoa, Mary is in a Slytherin shirt? I know, like, what's going on here? Listen, if I gotta wear that Hufflepuff garbage, she's gotta no. wear this Slytherin you know, every once in a while. You know what's so funny is I own three different Slytherin shirts. I yeah, don't know you who, do. I don't know who got me this one. Probably also... No, I think that was me. I got you that one. Oh, okay. I got you, because it um, fits you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my... Stepmom got Blake and I Gryffindor and Slytherin shirts in our appropriate sizes, except different houses. Like yes. she thinks we're she doesn't know Harry Potter, so I just laugh now because I look in my closet and I'm like, I have so much Slytherin stuff. And Nancy I says she loves my it. shirt. Thank you very much, Nancy. It's my Aww. Phantom of the Opera shirt. Yay! I, I get a I get a, a shirt every time I go to the Phantom of the Opera. Love it. It's my <gasps> Jocelyn person. coming in from the east side of Providence. Oh, hello. Uh, hey. Oh my goodness, Jocelyn. Hello, right. hello. Oh goodness, Greg. Hello, Rody. I miss. I miss the East Side. I know. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see where we got. Uh, my aunt saying hashtag Go Nerd Clan Go. Yay, thank you thank so you. much, and Patricia as well. Thank you, Suzanne, giving us the expecto patronum. Thank you, of course, everybody. If you are here and you are wanting to share, as Mary said, please let us know that you are sharing with expecto patronum. Share any way that you can because. Podcasts grow by sharing. It's and true. here's the deal, ladies and gents. I think you've been sharing a lot because we're the number five Harry Potter podcast Ooh. on the planet. <laughs> Isn't that wild? It is wild. It is wild. It, it, we're just a couple of jabronis in Providence, Rhode Island, sitting mm -hmm. here in our in our in our uh, in our basement talking about Harry Potter. True, the true. Number five podcast for Harry Potter in the, the universe. World. In the universe. In the because I don't know if there's any other podcasts on on any other planets, Mary. We are the top five Harry Potter podcast in the universe. In the universe, <laughs> just Mars think about ain't that. got nothing on us. Mm -hmm, just... Oh, I love it! I love it. So, do we have any more expected patronums, or did you get them all going? Hi, Gloria. Also, Gloria one of our Rody friend right there. Hey, Let's Patricia. Uh, thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Hi, Amy. Amy. Thank you so and much. Anna, the hashtag Go Nerd Ellen, Go to Anna. Of course, Tammy. everybody. Tammy is here, our Boston girl. I love it. All right, you ready? Uh, yeah, I think we can make a podcast. I'm feeling slightly under the weather, friends. I've just had a crazy headache for the past couple of days, which I know many of you have too, whether it's just like heat or allergies or craziness. So bear with us. We want to take a quick moment to say hello to our friends on Instagram. Maya, um, Mia, sorry, Amanda, Katie Jo, Rosita, Courtney, Sarah, and Lauren. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And don't forget, friends, wherever you're tuning in from, let us know what house you're in. Add the little emoji or the colors because it's just so fun. 
fun. Of course, you've been telling us where you've been tuning in from. And for today's fun question to get the conversation started, because this is why we go live, especially on days like today where I'm literally in jammies. Yeah. Um, normally, we would just be doing an audio podcast, but we come here live because of the community, because of the conversations. So to kick things off with the conversation, mm-hmm. I would want to know what candy would you eat because you love it so much that even if it was slightly questionable, you'd be like, eh, it's probably worth it. Oh, that's a good question. Right? Like, that's, what is your favorite candy? That candy. Basically what, is what I'm asking. I know. I know your answer. I got I got your answer. I don't think you do. I do. What? Three Musketeers. No. <gasps> I would not eat a questionable Three Musketeers. Stop it. No. Would you eat a questionable Reese's Peanut Butter Cup? No. What would you? What would you? I would totally eat a questionable Rolo. <laughs> <laughs> what? And... Gobstoppers. That is the most. Re- I don't think I've ever actually seen you eat a Rolo I, ever. Exactly, because I already did. <laughs> You've eaten all of them. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely eat Rolos if I was like, how long have these been here? I don't know. It's particularly if they're like pre-wrapped, those little like individually wrapped Rolos. But Everlasting Gobstoppers. I found some in my pocket the other day. Maybe that's why I don't feel good. <laughs> I was like, they're everlasting. They don't go bad, right? <laughs> oh, no. I got them on my last trip, and I just found them in my pocket, and I was like, eh. <laughs> probably okay. <laughs> I've been wondering why I was sick. Here we go. All right. <laughs> We're going to kick things off today with Chapter 4 of the Goblet of Fire. For all of you who are new, um, yay, Lauren, payday for sure. Yummy. Um, And so we've got lots of people weighing on in. So chat with each other. Be like, that's my favorite. That's not my favorite. I would would eat a questionable candy corn. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Particularly like the pumpkin. Yes. Here, let's head on over and make a podcast. Let's make a podcast, shall we? We Everybody say it with me in the comments. Ten seconds. For room tone. From Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to the Potterverse. It is a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners. Let's step into the night to pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Welcome. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. And if somebody blows a hole in my fireplace, mm-hmm. we're going to throw fists. Yeah. Wait, wait, I, ain't, I ain't throwing China. I ain't, I, I'm not doing any of that. We don't even have China. We're going to have words. Yeah. We're going to have massive words. What did you just do to my fake fireplace? Like, what are we, you know, they didn't, it wasn't even the fake fireplace. They, the guy blew a hole in his wall. Yeah, but he can Oculus Repero that. Do I? No, fireplace Repero. Do I dare say, do I dare say, I actually kind of felt bad for the Dursleys in hey, this chapter. Hey, you can say that. You can totally say that. Well, this, of course, is chapter four of book four, The Goblet of Fire. We're looking at Back to the Burrow, which is quite an interesting title for this chapter since none of it actually takes place in the burrow. Yeah, that's interesting. You don't think that it'd be called like flu power, flu powder mishap or like Anything danger else. at the Dursleys? <laughs> no, nope. back to the burrow. Not really. Next chapter will be there. This oh. chapter we're hanging out uh, on Privet Drive. All right, so <clears throat> here is our quote. The electric fire shot across the room as the boarded-up fireplace burst outward, expelling Mr. Weasley, Fred, George, and Ron in a cloud of rubble and loose chippings. Aunt Petunia shrieked and fell backward over the coffee table. Uncle Vernon caught her before she hit the floor and gasped, or gaped, speechless at the Weasleys, all of whom had bright red hair, including Fred and George, who were identical, down to the last fret freckle. That's better, panted Mr. Weasley, brushing dust from his long green robes and straightening his glasses. Ah, you must be Harry's aunt and uncle. 
<laughs> that is a way to meet somebody. Oh, yeah. You, that's that's the way you're going to get it done. That's it how is. it's going to be. Now, before we get into this chapter, we would, of course, love to take this moment to thank our friends who have been able to support all of the podcasts at Marion Blake Media. Those of you who are members at jointhenerdclan.com are giving you all sorts of hugs and air kisses and just know that your support of these mom and pop podcast shop uh, really, really does make such a huge difference. If you yourself are not yet a member, you can join for as little as $2 a month. That's less than a cup of coffee. And it honestly goes towards what you hear right now. It goes towards Blake and I being able to take care of the website fees and take care of our technology and everything because we love to bring Lumos in the time of Knox. We love to have all of these free podcasts out for everybody. And actually, our friends at Join the Nerd Clan have tons of perks. Like they get to listen to our book clubs, they get to listen to podcasts early, and they even got to vote in our newest podcast adventure. It's all about the show The Last Kingdom, which you can find on Netflix. That is going to be available to all, but it was voted upon by our listeners. So if you're a fan of The Last Kingdom, keep Keep your eyes and ears open. It is already available in Stitcher and iHeartRadio. It hopefully will be available very soon in Apple Podcasts. We hope that you can join us on that adventure. And thanks again to our friends at jointhenerdclan.com. Let's get into the show, honey. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. So basically, uh, the Dursleys are waiting for the Weasleys to arrive to pick Harry Potter up to go to the Quidditch World Cup. The Weasleys show a little bit late, though, because they're having difficulties. You see, they're trying to arrive via flu powder, which means they're trying to come through the fireplace, which was boarded up. Maybe wonder why? Probably because tons of letters came through it a couple years ago, and it totally freaked the Dursleys out. I don't know. I'd probably would have done the same thing. In all of the chaos and all of the booming, Fred and George accidentally, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, drop a piece of candy and Dudley's tongue becomes a ton. <laughs> the end. Uh, you know, are you sad that this chapter was not included in the Most film? certainly. I think that this would have been an absolutely brilliant comedic mark. I can visualize all of the actors just stumbling and flumbling outside of this blown up fireplace. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I think that the actors who portray Vernon and Petunia would have nailed nailed this with yeah. their reactions seeing Dudley run around clenching his rear end I also think that Mr. Weasley the actor probably would have nailed this too oh yeah especially talking about plugs I'm like oh I got plug I, I got all the plugs you know for the, for everything and yeah the batteries. batteries too you know my wife says I'm crazy but you know they, there you are yeah like <laughs> it's tough because I mean obviously you take a look at the size of this book and they had to pick and choose a lot of things with which to keep and which not to. But I agree. If Harry Potter were to ever become a television show and they would kind of redo everything, when they get to season four, hang on to your butts. Yeah, Hold sure. on to your butts. Season because, four? Yeah, season four, meaning like the book four. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, sorry. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> uh, Jocelyn here on Facebook says, this should have been where the movie started. Your thoughts on that? I think it would have been interesting. I definitely think it would have been quite interesting to, to watch. Uh, but I think the way that the movie actually started, I think it sets the tone for what is going to come, right? Well, the movie starts the way that the book starts. Right, exactly. So I, I'm i fine with the way that it starts because, yeah, you kind of need to have that. So then you can kind of forget it and you get all the frivolity of like, oh, look what he drilled up and Cedric Diggory just like floating through the air. You know, all these right, cute right. little things. So. No, I get it. I But this is why reading the books is so fun, because you really get to explore and expand in the original universe. So, you know, what I love about this is the Dursleys are all done up, and they are waiting ever so impatiently oh, for like, the Weasleys brimming, to arrive. brimming, brimming with yes, tension. Yes, You can feel, I love how, I love the description that uh, the author uses where she's saying that Vernon was reading the paper, but he really wasn't because his eyes weren't moving. Yeah. And, you know, Petunia's, you know, just fiddling and fuddying with duddying with the with the uh, uh with, with the couch uh the pillows and and dudley is just he's holding his backside because the last time that uh he encountered a magical folk is when he had a big tail from hagrid and he's just nervously touching his backside just waiting for something to come down on I know. him uh, it, I give you can feel the tension in the room as it's as it's brimming. Like, oh yeah, 
Yeah, hey, I, I hope uh, they, they come up dressed normally because I see what your lot wears all the time. And I hope they come in a car. What kind of car do you think they're going to be taking? Yeah. You know, always these worries about what their neighbors and what society is going to be thinking, you know, and the, the author remarks upon how Vernon is dressed up ever so nicely. And normally one would think that that is a sign that he's trying to be kind and welcoming. But really, this is to be a show off. Yeah. And, and, and to be intimidating as well. You know, not just to show off, but intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, that to me feels exactly like Vernon, uh, Vernon Dursley. Because not only is he saying that the wizards are abnormal because they're not normal, they they don't fall within the very quick and easy fine lines of the life that he has produced for himself, but more so his commentary on what the wizarding world is. It's beneath him. Mm-hmm. And he has the right, he has earned the right and reserves the right to dominate the wizards that come into his home. Uh, and it is also it also falls in a quick line, too, with how he has really treated others as well, uh, making excuses for Dudley as a, as a bully, number one. But also, too, if you remember the Japanese golfer joke that was used in the Chamber of Secrets, not great, Bob. Not great. Not great, Bob. You know what really wasn't great? their dinner that night. Can we just have a moment of silence for cottage cheese with shredded celery on top? (laughs) I mean, I'm down with cottage cheese and I'm actually down with celery, but shredded celery, what are we doing? Like whoever shreds celery and then to put it on top of cottage cheese. Mm. What are we doing, Petunia? Uh, I'm I'm out. Petunia needs a new cookbook. So why do you think they took this out of the film? I don't think there was room. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't think there was room. And also, I don't think it did anything for the characters that wasn't already established. We already know that Vernon and Petunia have their own thoughts and feelings against the wizarding community. We already know that the Weasleys would do anything to take Harry and to help him. Um, It would add some comedic bits, but really it doesn't push anything in the story further right so i think they needed to take it out yep i would probably agree with you on that one i think there's also a great commentary here too that there was a fireplace there actually was a fireplace in this house yet it was boarded up and replaced with an electric fireplace and it's funny because it's not really mentioned like oh yeah it was boarded up because the Dursleys were traumatized by hundreds of letters coming and flying through it. You know what right. I mean? Like, they've had to react and adjust even some little things within their house for fear that magical stuff is going to happen. Mm-hmm. And rightly so. Yeah, absolutely. And th- again, this is when I kind of feel bad. I kind of, I kind of feel bad for the Dursleys in, in this instance because. They've think of the all right. Think of the world that they live in. Obviously, Petunia is aware of the magical world. She understands that there are things that are happening outside of the boring, mundane Muggle world that she has chosen to live in for right now. She understands it, but they have not experienced it the way that they have until Harry finally went to Hogwarts and the. Let's just be honest about it. The trauma of yeah. magic on their family. I mean, it's been pretty we talked about pigtails. We talked about Aunt Madge blowing up like a balloon and flying away. Uh, we've seen uh, the the lady get the the pudding put on her head by Dobby. We've seen the pigtail and 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 the letters and the the all the weird stuff and a giant, a half giant showing up. And now this and now we got people blowing holes through my wall. To, to pick up Harry. I'm going to have you do a different perspective. Yes, so just hold that in. <laughs> okay, because all right. You're on a roll right now, and, and my energy is is lacking. So I'm going to channel all of this and just like seep just, it up for okay. a hot second. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, you know, so we got this whole thing where the, the Weezys are showing up late. Granted, the Weasleys have a really weird clock. We know this in their house, so maybe they couldn't tell time that well. Maybe the flu network was a little sticky, or maybe it was this kind of blockade that made them be 15 uh, minutes no, late. No, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been that. You just think it's the Weasleys being That's the Weasleys. That's the Weasleys being the Weasleys. I mean, they've got a big family. they you know got those families that you got to like kids. throw in the minivan like, hurry up, where's my shoe? I don't know where your shoe was. Fine, go shoeless. Come on, Ron, let's go. Yeah, you know? it, that's exactly what the Weasleys are. We got to get Harry. Now, why did he have to take everybody? 
Why did he have to take all these boys? He didn't take everybody. It took half of his crew. He took help Fred the, and George. Help for and the Ron. trunk. Okay. Help for all this stuff. You know what probably happened is he probably just needed Ron, and you know Fred and George were like, oh, but Dad, Harry's going to need our help. Because they could bippity boppity boo that trunk yeah, well, because and make it they fly. Even say, they even say it in this in this chapter. They wanted to see Dudley. Yeah. yeah. Because they've heard way too much yes. about him. We'll and, help, Dad. And how, it's, how all of a sudden, oh, 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 goodness, look at that, all mm, these little toffees. Sorry. Oh, look at that. Let me pick all of them up except for one, <laughs> you know? And it, was, it wasn't an accident. It yeah. was revenge. Yes. It was retribution for Harry and Love all it. of the misdeeds that the Dursleys have done to Harry. Oh, this is why Slytherindor, Slytherins and Gryffindors frequently have a little little too much in common. Yeah, it's a very fine line, a very fine True. line between the two. So uh, so here they come, and they blast open through the fireplace. That's what Arthur Weasley thinks is the best thing to do. And what I find interesting is that they go through this whole conversation, and he doesn't clean it up right away. Like, he says, like, don't worry, like, I will fix this. Because to him, it's nothing. To him, it's like, magic will fix this in a jiffy. It's okay <laughs> if we chat for five minutes while wow, this is in complete disrepair and you are losing your mind seeing your house in shambles. Right. But really, I wish he just, like, came through, bippity boppity boot it, fix. No. Then they could no have way. their conversation. But that's just not how he works. No, so. that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be uh, Mr. Weasley. No. Because that guy is just, like, he, he's he's, like... Just a rainbow. He's there, and then he's not there, and he's just magical when he's there, and then, so and then I, he's gone. I um, I absolutely love when you hear everybody like talking from behind the fireplace. So if you don't mind, oh yeah. Ouch, Fred! No, go back, go back. There's been <laughs> some kind of mistake. Tell George not to. Ouch, George! No, there's no <laughs> room. Go back quickly and tell Ron. Maybe Harry can hear us, Dad. Maybe he'll be able to let us out. Harry, Harry. Can you hear us? <laughs> what is this? Growled Uncle Vernon. What is going on? <laughs> so Harry, of course, approaches the fireplace. Mr. Weasley, can you hear me? Shh. <laughs> Mr. Weasley, it's Harry. The fireplace has been blocked up. You won't be able to go through. Damn, <laughs> said Mr. Weasley. What on earth do they want to block the fireplace for? They've got an electric fire. Really? <laughs> Eclectic, you say? With a plug? Gracious, I must see that. Let me think. Ouch. Ron! What are we doing here? Has something gone wrong? Oh, no, Ron. <laughs> no, this is exactly where we wanted to end up. Yeah, we're having the time of our lives here. Boys! Boys! I'm trying to think what to do. Yes. Yes, the only way. Stand back, Harry. That is literally it. So they're just like fumbling in the dark, laying all over each other. Tell George not to come. Oh, George is here. Oh, my goodness. Wait, where's Harry? No, Ron, stay back. Harry, what's going on? Leave me alone. <laughs> Like, I just picture everyone shoved into a small closet. You know, Absolutely. the way that this is sounding with these teenage boys bumbling mm -hmm. in the dark, and then he blasts it open. They all fall on out. And the first thing Mr. Weezy says is, that's better. Ah, you must be Harry's aunt and uncle. <laughs> and He's like brushing himself Meanwhile, off. there's just this debris. There's debris everywhere. And you know that moment? There was a moment... I made my own beer at one at one time oh, in my life. One time, and it it was actually good. it was time. it was a maple IPA, and I really enjoyed it. But the problem was, I added a little bit too much maple syrup, and what happens with sugar and yeast, and you let it sit over time, it gets really active. It was a science experiment. So I had a bunch of friends over, and I said, "Hey guys, guys, what what do we?" What do we, why don't we open up the, the maple IPA? Why don't IPA? we try the beer? Why don't we just try the beer? Let's try the beer. Let's, let's get it through. Popped it open. But the problem was, when I popped it open, all of the sugar and everything, it all reacted all at once, and the beer just exploded through the top. It was literally like in the movies when the kids make the volcano explosion. Yeah. It was that, but Blake in a beer bottle. And it hit. It, it was a beer jug. Oh, yes, it was. It was a beer jug. And it hit my ceiling, and there was brown maple ale everywhere, everywhere. all over us, all over the ceiling, yeah. everywhere, right? And me, myself and all my idiot friends just looked at each other. We were like, oh, my God. Oh, my. That just happened. And we just then we started laughing. And I can only imagine what that is like. That must have been what it was like for the Dursleys mm -hmm. at this moment when people are just blowing holes through the through the wall. Right. And and they're just there's stuff everywhere. And they're just looking at each other like, 
that just happened. Yep. <laughs> that just happened. And he brushes himself off, you know, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, this is totally my fault, but don't worry about it. You know, muggle fireplaces are not usually connected to the flu powder network, but I've got an inside connection. Like, we're totes okay. So what's going to happen is I'm going to send the kids back through the flu power, and then I'm going to disapparate. Basically, what he just said was pig Latin gibberish <laughs> <Yeah>. to <laughs> the muggle Dursleys. Who are still, like you said, in complete bewilderment that their house is in shambles. Right. So Mr. Weasley then goes and approaches Harry. The the twins go upstairs and they go get his trunk. Um, and Mr. Weasley decides that this is the appropriate time to compliment how beautiful the Dursley's home is. <laughs> with, the, with the stuff everywhere. Yep. <laughs> oh, and I love how, um, how Mr. Weasley... Can't say electric. Eclec- electricity. Because at first it was eclectic. Electricity. Yeah, eclectic. And then it was electricity. And I, I love the idea that he just collects plugs that he is fascinated by. Not the, the items themselves, but just the plug. Like, you think... He, he takes like a an Apple computer and it's like, oh wow, look at that, that's cool, and just cuts the plug and oh, takes the plug. He thinks it's the most valuable part. <laughs> electricity or whatever it was, mm-hmm. like electricity, like so funny, and that he has this whole stash of batteries, just great stuff, great little character things that the author is using to give you more a more. Uh, textured view of of Mr. Weasley. Electricity. <laughs> Great Eclect- stuff, man. Eclect- he says it two different ways. Yeah, I'll look it up. I got it. I got it. Um, and you know, uh, while this is all going on, all of this chaos, we've got Dudley who is running around. <laughs> clutching his rear end in different ways he was doing it even before they got there and now there's this burst hole through his fireplace a ton of wizards are inside his house just talking gibberish eclectic. and he's eclectic 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 and then echo electricity i think I'll, I'll i'll find it yeah um but yeah, so he's just walking around the poor thing. He has no idea what's going to happen next. And it's so funny that he's spending so much time focusing on his rear end because obviously it ends up being the other side of him that ends up getting all magical. But, but there's this also this great moment for again for Mr. Weasley mm-hmm. when everybody's saying goodbye. All right. Yeah. Okay. George, Braun. All right. Everybody, Fred, yeah. see you later. Get out of here. We, we got things to do. Take, make sure you take the trunk and head, head back home to the borough. And Fred goes, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Hold on. And drop some things and then continue with (laughs) your nice story. And there's this wonderful moment where we have a very specific contrast uh, between the two father figures in Harry's life right now, where the Dursleys don't even say goodbye to him. And that, like, not only does it bewilder Mr. Weasley, but... It almost disgusts him. Like, I'm going to take this His kid. His Gryffindor comes out. I'm going to take this kid. And he's going now. You ain't going to see him for the rest of the summer. Yeah. And then he's going to Hogwarts. And you ain't going to see him till next year. And you're not even going to say goodbye. Such a great contrasting moment. Because eventually, you know, the Dursleys do say, like, begrudgingly say, okay, bye then. But the absurdity of not saying goodbye to a child the absurdity of not saying goodbye to family is is incomprehensible it's unconscionable to him uncle vernon's face worked furiously the idea of being taught consideration by a man who had just blasted away half of his living room wall seemed to be causing him intense suffering but mr weasley's wand was still in hand and uncle mm-hmm. vernon's tiny eyes darted to it once before he said very resentfully Goodbye, then. Oh, oh, Rachel here on Facebook says, he's a redhead like Ariel and collects gadgets and gizmos aplenty. Ooh, yeah. Who's it's and what's it's galore? galore? You want thingamabobs? Arthur's got 20. True. <laughs> very, very true. Oh, you know what? That might have to be our closing theme tonight. <laughs> I love it. So then we get Harry saying, okay, bye, see you. And um, right as he's about to leave, he realizes that Dudley is kneeling beside the coffee table, gagging and sputtering on a foot-long, purple, slimy thing that was protruding from his mouth. One bewildered second later, Harry realized that the foot-long thing 
was Dudley's tongue and that a brightly colored toffee wrapper lay on the floor before him. So here we go. It's like pigtail all over again. You know, the worst fear for the Dursies, not only that their neighbors could see something weird going on or that something weird could be happening in their house, but that something happens to their precious Duddykins. It always happens to Dudley, right? It's not like this happens to Vernon. Now, granted, it's because Dudley eats random stuff that he should not be eating. You think you think he would have learned after the cake fiasco, but no, he uh, decides. Well, the, the cake fiasco in the movie, but um, it's it's like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory for yeah. for, for, the, for the tongue that. <laughs> it, I I just I just flip and love this. It's it's great. It's really good stuff. And then everyone's running around. Uncle Vernon's bellowing, waving his arms. Mr. Weasley has to yell, "Not to worry. I can sort him out." No, really. It's a simple process. It was just a toffee by my son. He's a real practical joker. It's only an engorgement charm. At least I think it is. <laughs> Please, I can correct it. So, you know, everyone's freaking out. And um <laughs> Aunt Petunia is tugging on this tongue, oh. thinking maybe she can rip it out. Uncle Vernon, who had completely lost control, seized that china figure on top of the sideboard and threw it very hard at Mr. Weasley. Now he's just like getting out of my house. Like, what did you do to this kid? I'm going to start throwing my expensive figurines at your head. Um, and he's just like, I'm just trying to help. Yes. <laughs> What are you doing? (laughs) Harry, the author notes, didn't want to miss out on the fun, but Uncle Vernon's second ornament narrowly missed his left ear, and on balance, he thought it might be best to leave the situation to Mr. Weasley. So he goes on off, and Harry spins away, leaving the Dursley's living room uh, in a rush of emerald-colored flames. You noticed, though, uh, Mr. Weasley says, "Listen, you know, I got this thing connected uh, b- b- for the flu network. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I knew a guy, and I got, a, I, I got the, you know, the, the, the magical. He knows a guy. I, I mean, know he's a guy. very I got connected. A guy. He's very he connected. But nobody thinks to like check. Nobody says, hey, you know what? Might be a good idea. Might be a good idea to just." check to make sure that like we're not going into natural gas pipes that 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 the whole house won't explode well how often are they connected to muggle fireplaces exactly. like it's a, not a thing they just do. show up just show up in a car like any like they don't like, have a car it's driving around they with said that they, they said that they rented a car from the magic ministry of magic before. yeah before but so that's what i'm saying just show up in a car you're, you're endangering an entire family I mean, he didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal the the fact of the matter is that hermione didn't even think of this because hermione is at the borough right now mm-hmm. and hermione is not like hey guys Mm, let's think this one through. I mean, probably everybody has a normal fireplace except for those who have traumatic experiences. Well, we don't have a normal fireplace. Mm. But we don't have a fireplace. That's what I'm saying. That's well. That's what I'm saying is that it couldn't even be. Connected what if they didn't the even have network. a fire? What if they didn't even? Have yeah, a then that would have been out of it. He would have been like, "Do they have a fireplace? No. Okay, we will have to get them in a different way. Mm. But if they have a fireplace, then that's the way you're going to get them." Mm. We don't have a fireplace. So, yeah, they would be like, oh, well, the Larsons can't do it that way. We're going to have to apparate. We're going to have to rent a car. But if they've got the flu powder, beam me up, Scotty. It's the easiest way. It makes you wonder, can can the Ministry of Magic just connect to any fireplace in the world? Yes. Unless it's like a hidden fireplace, I bet. Then why, why then couldn't... The Death Eaters Mm -hmm. just connect to a fireplace in Hogwarts when they wanted to. Well, because Hogwarts has lots of special things. You can't, like, just apparate in it. Yeah, but it's a fireplace. It's different. It is a fireplace. You know what's very interesting is that Sirius is able to flu powder his face from outside of Hogwarts. So you're right. So why wouldn't they just flu powder their way in? Yeah. Great question, Blake. We all will need to do some flu powder research. And why couldn't they just flu powder anywhere in the world? Like if they wanted to go. I'm wondering if you could only flu powder like in your own country. But maybe you could no. flu powder everywhere uh, in the world. Sirius was in uh, Rio. Okay. <laughs> when when he flu powdered in with his face. No, he was yeah. at Grimwald Place. Wasn't he at Grimwald Place then? Not, not in book four. Oh, okay. Yep. Not in book yep. four. Okay. All right, we're going to find out. We're going to do some flu powder research this week. I'm just, I'm just throwing that no, out I there. No, I appreciate, I appreciate all of what you throw out there. It, because it just, I don't know, I don't know. I 
know. And do you think this, this is, is when you take a children's book way too far? Yeah, way too far. Do you think this is also why also why Dudley um becomes the bully that he is? Yes. Because he just keeps and getting maybe he has bodied with Edie. by all of these wizards. Yeah. Yes. And, he's, and he realizes he needs a th- imagine this like it's one thing to be a grown adult Petunia grew up her entire life knowing about wizards her sister was one she even you know wanted to be one herself yep. had all this stuff then she meets Vernon who probably it took a really long time to explain the situation of the potters too she probably avoided it like the plague and then had to explain it to him little by little they do not tell Dudley anything Dudley finds out on what his 12th or 13th birth, birth year that his cousin who he has lived with his entire life is a wizard that wizards exist and that they can give you flipping tales mm-hmm. everything that Dudley has had an interaction with in the magical world has been terrible terrifying his parents have been super freaky um, granted he's always treated Harry badly but like Harry was a, essentially like a brother figure ter- treated terribly once again but like mm-hmm. Harry's now gone they yep. just like whisked him away and he can't tell a soul. At least Vernon and Petunia can talk with one another. Dudley can't go to the school counselor and be like, yeah, so, you know, I started to eat as a coping mechanism because I have these nightmares that, like, something's going to go wrong with me because, you know, I'm related to a wizard and nothing like that. <laughs> nothing for this young boy who has to grow up keeping this massive secret to himself. So no wonder he bullies. His parents are bullies. And he has no one to talk to. I know. He needs a journal. Not the one, though, that is, like, the beast's one. You know, no, 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 he can't, kind of he journal, cannot, not cannot that kind have of book, that. But he needs a journal. He needs like a clonazepam or something. Just get him no, there no, and just don't, and no. relax. He needs, you know what he needs? He needs talk space. He needs some talk like virtual space. therapy <laughs> where they really can't, they can't like totally judge him because it's virtual. Oh, and they're man. just like, you do you, boo. You're in this magical world. <laughs> you need talks. Yeah, you're in a magical world. All right, sure. I'm so <laughs> glad that they now have. Th- I was just talking to a girlfriend yesterday, and you know, Blake and I are huge proponents for for. Um, mental health of course and uh you know we joke about the copays but it's because we have spent I, I'm, spe- of dollars I'm spending co-pays. thousands of dollars in copays <laughs> so uh so you know we're, we're able to give it some levity but um you know we were just talking about how wonderful it is that mental health has become really brought to the forefront and a lot of people are taking it seriously and i think it because we see things in such a different light now here in 2021 you read it with you read these characters through different eyes, and also sure. it's our maturity. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got this kid has I gone feel through really the ringer badly for Dudley. I do. Yes. He, like everything happens to this kid, and he doesn't ask for. I mean, yes, Dudley is an awful kid because he was raised that way. Because Petunia and mm-hmm. Vernon are are yeah, they're not awful people. They're awful to Harry. I mean, they're probably also awful people. Yeah, but they're not awful to to Dudley. No, they're they are like very loving, but spoil him rotten. No, exactly. And they it, raised it, him to be right. a spoiled rotten. And by brat. all accounts, Vernon is a he's a hard worker. He's trying to make deals, he's selling drills, doing his thing that he's got to do. He, go, he goes to work every day, works hard. I'm not saying he's the greatest guy on the planet, but I'm saying, yes, he is awful to Harry. But when you th- when you start thinking about Dudley, all, all this stuff just happens to him. Oh, man, oh, oh man. man. All right. So that is that. You got anything else for this chapter, my doll? It's a small chapter. It is. We're just getting to the good stuff here. I, I We're imagine. now getting to the burrow. This should have been called getting to the burrow. <laughs> Talking about the burrow. Blowing up fireplaces. Blowing up fireplaces. <laughs> Dudley gets a big tongue. All right, you ready for some different perspectives? Yes, I am, because you're going to do it tonight. I'm going to do it tonight, I might you interview sure? you, but yeah, you're going to go Oh, you it. can interview me, sure. We'll, I, we'll see how it goes. I, mean, I like this interview style. I know you do. That's why I, I normally like it. playing the straight man, like the straight guy in the interview. I don't know what that means. Me, mean, just like the, I'm not supposed to be funny. I'm just asking you questions. Okay, yeah. And you're the one riffing. Okay. But you know what? We're going to exchange some positions right. here. We're just going to flip-flop it. Try something different. Flippy floppies. In my flippy floppies. And yeah, Kinko is making copies. All right, here we go. Ready? Let's do the different perspective. Holy cricket. You're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. And you are? We're going to be Vernon today. Vernon. Hey, how are you? You know, I got things going on. 
Yeah, all the drills. We know life is crazy. You know, what's, I got, what's I'm, I'm making on? deals. I'm making deals. Trying to provide for my family. I'm still trying to pay off the surgery that I that my kid had a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, that, that was weird. Thousands, thousands. How'd I you know I got. That? I know I got the insurance. I, but it, it, it was. They so, said it was. It was cosmetic. <laughs> it was cosmetic. So, so I, I got to pay thousands. So what happened to you this weekend, Vernon? I'm your talk space therapist. I don't judge. Listen. <laughs> Tammy, I'm gonna call you Tammy. Tammy. We got real Tammy here. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Bertha. All right, okay. Bertha. Listen, Bertha. Bertha Jorkins. Okay. Bertha. Bertha. I gotta tell you, it's rough weekend. Okay. Rough weekend. How so? I got this kid that lives with me. His name's Harry. Right. Mm-hmm. He's just he's an annoying little kid. He's my is my sister's nephew. You've what, mentioned uh, him before. Yeah, yes. I, I know. Yes. I know you know who he is. Yes. He's, he's messy hair, and I just I don't like him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the problem is. I, he's got to live with me, and, and that's fine. I put up with him. He, yeah, I make him do the dishes every once in a while. He burns my toast, and he burns some stuff, the, the ham every once in a while. Mm-hmm. He gets it. But I keep him upstairs in my son's second bedroom. Mm-hmm. I used to I used to make him live, live under the under the stairs. But we worked through that. We right? did. We, we, we you know what? That. We did work through yes. that. Yes. I realized that came was... Came up with a healthier choice. It may not have been the best choice that I've yes. ever made. So this weekend, Vernon. Yeah. Um, so I was just happy. I was happy because I was getting rid of the kid. Just getting him out of my house. What, um, healthy choice? Getting rid of- no, no, it's healthy. It's healthy. It's healthy for my heart. Oh, I don't know what you mean by getting rid of him. The blood pressure goes down when oh. Harry's out of the house, right? Okay, yeah. And uh, safe space here, right? Safe space? Talk space is safe space. He's a wizard. He's a wizard, Bertha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you brought this up before. I thought we were over this, but continue. No, I'm, I can't get over because he's a wizard. Okay. He's a wizard. And th- the problem with wizards is that they spawn more wizards. Okay. I'm in my house. I'm waiting for these wizards to pick up this wizard kid. And I, I'm thinking they're going to drive. Anybody anybody that, dri- that comes to my house, they drive, right? You'd think that wizards would drive cars because they got cars. Except you talked about those owls, but continue, yes. I'm waiting. It's 5 o'clock. They're supposed to be there. 5-5, 5-10, 5 5 And you care about punctuality. Yeah, I want people. Time is money. I could have had an engagement. I could have had things going on. I could have been selling drills. Time is money. Mm. A, B, C, always be closing. How did this make you feel? I was, blood pressure was raising okay. through the roof. I was on fire. Carry okay? on, let's land the plane. Then I heard some, then I heard some stuff. It's coming from my fireplace. Mm. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I got holes in my wall. I got holes in my, somebody blew a hole in my, it was the wizards, I'm telling you. It was the wizards who blowing holes in my wall. What are you doing? You could have blew up my house. You could have you could have blew up my kid. And then all of a sudden, I turn around. My kid on a diet. Love him, but on a diet. Could me? I could use. I could lose a couple of lbs. So can my We're kid. We're a little all over the place, but yes, Vernon. I turn around. He's eating some to- toffee. I, you know. I, from the blow up, from the from the blow, because one of the one of the wizards had magical toffee that just fell out of his pocket, right? Yes. And I turn around, and I think, you know what? The kid needs he needs a little bit of a treat. Needs a little bit of it. I'm I'm not gonna say nothing. His mother didn't see it. I didn't see it. Hear no evil, see no evil. Okay. And then all of a sudden, his his tongue, Bertha, the tongue, Bertha. Let me tell you, five feet long. It was it was this big. Th- it was it was ra- it was rounder than than you can imagine. Okay, so uh, it was like a lizard, before an we, overgrown lizard. Before we wrap things up, Vernon, remind me what what medications did you take this day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord! Oh, wizards! What are they doing to me? There you go, blowing and holes in my in my wall. And see, got to come through the fireplace. And <gasps> see, Vernon. <laughs> Well done. Oh. I'll give you some snaps. Oh man, thank snaps. you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I like how Vernon is absolutely from Boston. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right, it's time for some listener questions, Marvin. Are you ready? I am. We do have some emails here, and of course, for those of you who are in the live chat right now, and there are many of you. Uh, if you do have a question for Mary and I about this chapter or, or any other chapter that we have already read or some other Harry Potter related things, put the uh, question in the comments and put a lightning bolt emoji before the question. That way we know to read it. Hmm. Now it's time for the listener questions. You ready? Yeah. Let's go, Marvin. Oh, Miles here. All right, so the first question uh, comes from. 
Oh, I don't have the name here. I think, it was, I think it's James. I could be wrong. Anyway, he says, uh, hello, I uh, came upon your podcast and I listened to the very first episode and I loved it. It was amazing. Oh, I think this is Charles. That Thank I think that's you. what it is. Um, by the way, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. I've read all the books like seven times over and with the Fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. Beasts screenplays book and the Cursed Child. Yes, you're in good company. I know a lot about the Harry Potter universe and I bet you do too. There are fun facts about him and he'd like to know us, our fun facts. Oh. The ones that he says here too. His favorite movie is The Dark Knight. Marvin, your favorite movie. Of all time? Of all time. I don't really have one. Come on. You don't, don't have one? No. I'll get back to you on that. All right. It you changes like every year. All right. You want to know what mine is? Yes. Everybody in the comments. Oh, we know. Say it with me now. Say it with me. It always goes back to The Godfather. My favorite movie for very, very long was The Princess Bride. Uh, Mowage. Mowage. Anybody want a peanut? <laughs> number one book uh, for Charles here. or uh, Yeah, I think it's Charles. Uh, number one book is Ready Player One. Ooh. It's a good book. How about your favorite book, Marvin? What is your favorite book? Oh, wow. Um, once again, this changes annually. Okay. I will say that reading the Harry Potter series with our kids this year has been an absolute delight. So I will say uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for this year would be my top pick just because like going into this universe with them mm -hmm. has been truly magical. My favorite book, and uh, if my fellow uh, classmates at St. Anselm College would hear this, they would puke. But oddly enough, I've come to really love it. It's the Iliad. Every time I read that book, I learn something new. How often do you read it? I mean, I haven't read it in, in, in a couple of years. Exactly. But I'm saying every time I read that book yeah. throughout school, and the way uh, that St. A's, uh, that's the nickname for my school, the way they keep kids like that just aren't ready for their level of education, they say, okay, you're going to be in this class. It's called Humanities. And your first assignment is you have to read the Iliad in a week. And we have to have big tests on and yada yada. And if those who fail, like, are just, they transfer out immediately. And everybody hates it. Everybody knows it's coming. But I've come to love it. Mm. And and it's just such a great, incredible book. Uh, his age, he's 15 years old. In the age Hi. that he started, he was 11 years old. And he has seven siblings. So That's can't awesome. wait. And the question for chapter three uh, of Harry Potter 4 is, would you want a scar like Harry's, even if it means pain, you can see Voldemort's mind, would you want the scar? No. I'll stay in the Matrix. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think I'm taking the red pill. When it comes to like Voldemort, yeah. Um, no thanks. Yep, I, I agree. I will skip it. This one comes from Lacey. She says, uh, if you were to put yourself in Harry Potter book series, what would you do and how would you change the series? I would stop ser serious from going bye-bye. Uh, if if so, you could change, okay. if you could put yourself in the book okay. and or any book and change the way the way the narrative goes, the story, how it goes, what would you do and how what would you change? I gotta tell you, reading that fanfic of Minerva McGonagall adopting and taking care of Harry has completely blown my mind. That's what I would have done. These are the worst sort of muggles imaginable, and I'm not going to let this happen, Dumbledore. I will raise Harry. Mm. And if he needs to like call this home, we can visit. Just so he can have like this magic little mojo thing happen or whatever, but I'm gonna raise this kid. Yeah, um, Lacey, you actually stole mine. I would do everything I could to make sure Sirius does not die, um, because I love the character and I love everything that he means to Harry. Uh, and I and I know that it's necessary for Sirius to die because Harry. I thought has you would have said like I would have hoped that Snape wouldn't have called Lily a mud blood. Uh, no, because then Harry's not born, necessarily. Oh, you're right. Um, and, and I want Harry born. But I but I think Siri, Sirius's death is important for Harry because it makes Harry alone. He can't rely on somebody else to do something for him. Mm. Like, he can't fall back on his parents. He can't fall back on an elder um, wizard to help fight Voldemort. It has to be him. So I, I get it. And Harry has to learn that. 
but I want I, I just want that relationship for Harry. Okay. If there was one thing I could change, that would be what it would it would be what I would do. From Sienna, she says, What do you think would happen if Neville was the chosen one? By the way, love your podcasts. Thanks, Sienna. So much. They're awesome. Keep doing them. Well, Sienna, I guarantee you we're gonna keep doing them. Thank you. And if you really like us, go listen to The Last Kingdom with Mary and Blake. <laughs> the brand new podcast we just did la- last night. Uh Maryandblake.com. Uh Mary. I think Neville would have kicked Voldemort's butt just as much. And I think that Harry would have been the Neville in the sense that like he would have been helping out. He yeah. still would have been Harry. Um, my concern would have been that Harry would have been tortured by his family um, a lot more. Like, I don't know if there would have been as much effort to get him into Hogwarts. Like, does Hagrid go after every Muggle-born kid or Muggle-living kid, Mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that they come to Hogwarts and scare the heck out of their (laughs) aunt and uncle? (laughs) Uh, I don't know if he would have had as much help into getting into Hogwarts, but I think Neville would have held his own. Amy here on Facebook says, I would want both Lupin and Sirius Mm. to remain in this series. All right, Mary, you got to choose one. You got to choose one. Yeah. Sirius a Lupin, who are you choosing? Lupin. To live? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. Really? Why are you choosing Lupin over Sirius? Because his kid's an orphan. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Like, who does Sirius leave? Harry and Buckbeak? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beaky can handle I mean, his I, own. Yeah, yeah. All right, Anna says, do you think uh, Petunia would throw Harry out after the tongue She issue? can't throw him out. Can't, yeah, not allowed. Won't happen. Uh, would she want to? You yes, bet. Can absolutely. she? She cannot. I mean, the kid's tongue. It's, it's, lo- it's long. It's a golf club, essentially. It's how long, long it is. Long and strong. Going to get the friction on. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah, you want to get my Mercedes? Yeah. Uh, Caitlin asks, if the Weasleys were stopping over for dinner, what would you make? And to entertain, what muggle item would you show, Mr. Weasley? Oh, there you go, Blake. All right. What What would would you make? uh, What would I make? I know what I would make. What would you make? I would make a ZD bake. Because, listen, that's a lot of teenagers. (laughs) <laughs> Get Good me something point. cheap that I can just like bake all at once. Some nice big ziti with like meatballs cooked in. Bada bing, bada boom. No. Pop a couple of those casseroles in. Ziti casserole. You know what I'm making? What? Tacos. That's a lot of tacos to make yeah. for that family. Yeah, but oh, but you could have the taco bar. And yeah, you, could you have got all the taco the bar. Fixings. And they, they all get. And they Mr. Weasley know they can touch doing. all the tongs. You know and everything. that he'd make a mess. They'd crack the hard shells. They wouldn't understand how to eat it. That's why you give them soft shells too. Okay. You wrap them up. You know. You know how fascinated he would be by soft shells and how you wrap them up. Okay. What well, What would the Muggle item be that you would show Mr. Weasley? Oh man, what would be the Muggle item I show Mr. Weasley? I know what I would. What would you get? What would you? Some show kind him? of a fidget spinner. <laughs> Good point. Right. What Good is the point. purpose of a rubber duck? Well, what is the purpose of this, Arthur? See if you can figure this one out. You know what I would show him? Simon Says. Ooh. He gets the to touch it. Game? Yes. And the beeps and the bops. Or like a bop the, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> bop it. <laughs> Twist it. Spin it. <laughs> Imagine Mr. Weasley with a Simon Says. Yeah. Guy would freak out. He would. He would, he would just blow he his little mind. He would completely be asking for it for his own for Christmas. Another question I have for you now that I'm thinking about it, Marvin. Um, I, I see you pointing up at it. I, I Just give me a second. A question I have for you. Wizards can just fix anything. No. Right? Okay. Maybe. Not really. Well, what do you mean no? I mean, we just seen Mr. Weasley fixing a, a blowing up I hole. I mean, I know of a cabinet that takes a really long time to get fixed. Yeah, I mean, I suppose. I guess there's nothing. I just, I guess, my question is: there is there nothing sacred in the wizard world that, like, is, if if anything can be blown up and just fixed again? No, it can't. Not everything can, man. Mm, fine. Fair Look enough. at Dumbledore's hand. Suzanne asks, "Will you make a text reminder for the Last Kingdom?" Probably. More than likely, yes. Uh, Suzanne, other than other, Suzanne says, but if Neville was the chosen one, Harry's parents wouldn't be dead. He'd be raised by James and Lily, oh, yeah. right? They wouldn't have had a problem solved. sending him to Hogwarts. Good point. Uh, Amy says potty pizza. That's what they would. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, uh, ladies and gents, I think it is time to wrap this bad boy up. Marvin, you got anything else you want to say before we let go of uh, no. our friends here at the Potterverse? I do not. All right, fair enough. Let's close this bad boy out. Maybe he's right. 
Maybe there is something the matter with me. <laughs> I was forgot that you were doing this. I wasn't how prepared. That makes such wonderful what, you think things. I forgot? I don't Could forget. I, don't I got a forget. long memory. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? So on your scale Wouldn't of princesses from her? Disney, where does Ariel rate? She totally would fit in with the Weasley family, by the way. Oh, like, yeah. she is kind of who I pictured Book Ginny to be, but smarter. Because Ariel, Ariel God for bless me, her, Ar Ariel not for the me, smartest. She, Ariel's a bottom five. Bottom five. Oh. Oh, wow. Hold on. Okay. I've got who's it's and what's it's galore. You want thingamabobs? Arthur's got 20. I mean, bottom five, that's pretty harsh. Yeah, bottom five. You want to know why? Give me, like, one of your top five. Uh, uh, you know, see, I'm gonna go with Raya. I mean, that's kind of like a cop out, but okay. that's not a cop out. Oh, Raya is great. She is a Disney princess. I know it's just she's so like new. Not everybody knows who's who she is, and she's not just like your typical Disney princess. Uh, and, and, and I'm which gonna is go. Cool. I'm gonna go with Anna. I'm a I'm a big Anna guy. Huge I'm Anna I'm big guy. on Elsa. She's a queen, so it's it's kind of hard. Yeah. But I'm big on Elsa. And I mean, technically, Anna is now a queen. That's true, yeah. yeah. Mulan. I'm big on Mulan. I mean, she's technically not a princess. That's true. Good point. But Ariel, bottom five. I would even say, I would dare say bottom three. Wow. One of the why? She, she's just, she's swimming along. She's doing whatever she's, she's doing. She's super young. She's one of the youngest ones. She's swimming. She's very nice. She pokes her head out of the water. She sees a guy and says, that's it, I'm married. Hey, hey, does doesn't hear his voice. Doesn't have a conversation. What? Do you like white bread? Do you? Maybe. What's your favorite color? Are Are you a blue guy? Or are you a black? Are you into black? Maybe you're. Maybe you're into yellow. Maybe you like sushi. Right. What would she do? I feel like she would have a problem with that. I, I feel. Mean, is she higher or below the like Snow White? Uh. Below Snow White because Snow White knows what it takes to have friends. Snow White's got all the little, all, all the little has guys. Friends too. Yeah, they're not, they're not friends, friends. Because if they were real friends, they would have told her, hey, "Don't go with Eric. Guy doesn't know what he's Sebastian doing." Sebastian does say that. Eh, uh, whatevs. <laughs> guys, I'm out on Ariel. Not, wow, I had no idea. You know that, like. I mean, she's she, nice to look at. I'm not going to say no. I'm just saying, if we're if we're rating princesses, she's she's bottom three. Okay. <laughs> wow. wow. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> On that note, uh, we're gonna be closing out the show. Bell. Bell's a good one. Bell's a keeper. I'm in on Bell. Okay, we're going to close out the I'm show. Down with Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. Make sure that you sign up for our complimentary texting reminders so you can join us live. The phone number, if you're in the U.S., is 81010. And in the message field, you put the at symbol with Elder One. Should e I play our real close up music? D E R. Sure. Okay, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> this is what happens when we just take too long talking about princesses. All right, go ahead. Okay, so as I was saying, our texting reminder service, the phone number is 81010, and the message field, you're going to put the at symbol and Elder Wand, E-L-D-E-R-W-A-N-D, -E -E just all one word with that at symbol at the beginning, no spaces. If you're outside the U.S., you can also sign up. Just go to remind.com slash join slash Elder Wand. Uh, Rachel C. here says Merida. Merida's a good one, too. Merida's awesome. I'm in on Merida. Yeah, we're really in on Merida. I, I, I might... I might I, retract my Your bell? my my Raya one and put and Merida up there. I mean, I would actually put Raya in front of Merida. Really? Yeah, Raya like Merida's kind of a punk for a while. She she goes through a, she does go through a learning journey. All right, so should I do a right, Raya number 1, Anna and Elsa 1A 1 2 1A 1B. I can't believe you layer them on the same page. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to go with a Merida here and then I'm going to go with a Bell. Interesting choice. I'm going to go with... Uh, I think I'm putting Merida above Belle. I think I put Tiana above Belle. Fair enough. Fair enough. Of course, everybody, <laughs> remember, go to MarionBlake.com. Check out all the great podcasts we that we have We don't podcast about Disney, though. No, no, of course you'll not. You'll get it wiggled in. But we are podcasting about The Last Kingdom, Very so check different. that out. All right, everybody. My name's Mary. My name is Blake. Mischief Managed. 
And I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Oh. <laughs> uh... No, how no one's rating the princes. <laughs> uh, Rachel says Tiana is my favorite, right? Tiana's so good. She's so so good. You know what it is? She's I, just solid, man. I didn't Driven. see all of the Princess and the Frog. That's the issue. I fell asleep halfway through. Oh, then we need to watch it. Yeah, I'll watch it with it's you. It's really good. I got no problem with it. Let's go. And it's something that I can like appreciate the um, courtship a bit because there's some courtships where I'm like, really, is that your choice? Really? Like, I doubt most princesses' choice in men. Mm-hmm. Like, I agree. Aladdin. How about Flynn Aladdin. Rider? Flynn Rider. Like, come on. You guys are dating criminals <laughs> who lie for a profession and steal. Like, you sure you really want to be with them after just knowing them for a couple of days? I mean, it's up to you. Just saying. How did we get on this on the princess talk? We need prenup. <laughs> All the prenups. Oh. <laughs> I do think that Aladdin and Flynn Rider are quite dashing, but it's because they're they're shady. I think Flynn is he's got the better smolder. Oh, he totally does. Because he knows. He, he knows does. he has yes. got the better smolder. Yes. That's the issue. You know what I want? I want more of a backstory on Flynn. How did he get into like thievery? You know right. why? Why he's such a talented young man. Can we get a prequel? Can we get a Disney Plus prequel on Flynn Rider? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I still can't get over? No. How Olaf calls what's his name Sven the whole first movie. Blake didn't know this. We've watched Frozen a million times. And then <laughs> we were we were watching Frozen 2 for like the second millionth time. Yeah. And I was saying, oh, it's just so funny. Um how he's like so bad though like Olaf just says funny things here or there. And I said, just like how he calls Kristoff Sven so many times. Blake was like, Well, what do you mean? I was like, he calls Christoph Sven for most of the movie. And Blake never picked up on never it. Never picked up on it. And then it. when he finally watched it again, he was like, oh, I just did it again. I just, did it. <laughs> just called him Listen, Sven. Sven. <laughs> Pay attention, Sven. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was one of the best underrated jokes that I, I it just, it just went way over my head. Mm. Didn't see it the, at all. That was so great. That was like an eye opening moment for me. Yep. And then That's we just watched Tonight with the Kids, um, Ice Age, Dawn yeah. of the Dinosaurs. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of adult references in that one, too, that are hidden. That's true. Yeah. Like, there's this one thing where uh, one of the characters is trying to go get milk for baby dinosaurs, and he goes up to this, like, yak, I guess, for the lack yeah. of a better <laughs> word, except it's a bull yak. <laughs> And he goes to reach for what he thinks is an udder. And you can't see anything. You just see him reaching under the yak. And the yak is then the next scene charging him. He's like, I'm so sorry. I thought you were female. And like we all as adults are like, oh, my gosh. What was he just trying to milk? We all know. But like as kids, it goes straight over their heads. Um, but, yeah, when you're watching kid movies, you're like, wow, they really do like sprinkle in adult humor. You know, you know, not even adult humor, but like even the Christoph Sven thing. Yeah. Like, kids don't pick up on that, right? Apparently, away. I don't pick up on it either. <laughs> <Nor does> Blake. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's call this one uh, over. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, watching this evening. We will see you next week. Yes. Uh, either with the Last Kingdom or the Potterverse, one or the other. We'll see. Uh, definitely the Potterverse. Both. I know that. Probably both. Probably both. Probably both. Yeah. We'll see. All, All right. right. Bye, I'll everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>